it's an honor to be here with so many creative leaders and business leaders, and I wanted to add my congratulations to this slate of amazing women. Kristen Chenoweth, Jill Kress, Nina Garcia, amazing speech, Meredith Coppett levian Jennifer Lowney, Nancy Reyes, and Rakia Reynolds. The New York Women's and Communications Matrix Awards honors exceptional leaders who help pave the way for those who will follow in their path. Many are in this room, and all these leaders have done that in spades. It gives me great pride in introducing my friend, former colleague, now client, Jen Lowney. The words are a window into Jen's career. I've known Jen for much of her career, from joining Brunswick Group as an associate in 2004, through our expansion and success working on some of the highest profile assignments in the corporate world, to joining Citi and counseling the first female CEO of a money center bank. At first I thought, hmm, she's a bit quiet. Like, does she have what it takes in this rough and tumble world? Then I just listened to what Jen had to say and watch her grow as a colleague, a team leader, a partner, an office head, a wife, a mom, a mentor, and much more. I've been side by side with Jen in great times and challenging times, and always with a fighting spirit, a demand for excellence, for the highest possible standards, walking the walk as well as talking the talk, and doing it while having fun with a sense of humor, or at least not killing each other, or at least not killing anybody we didn't want killed. I quickly learned that one should not confuse her friendly demeanor with being soft-spoken or not opinionated. What I did learn was her sort of evil eye, her eyes narrow, her lips purse. She sends it to you and I'm like, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> She's actually giving it to me right now. She took me to the woodshed numerous times and it was my woodshed. I was the boss. When we were working together to grow the firm, and by the way, there are close to four, uh, sorry, close to 20 former colleagues here who are now heads of communications in their own amazing careers who worked together. Some crap, traveled great distances to be here. Jen was a role model in the office for women and men and looked up to. She was the first to have children in our office. We had no prior experience if Jen could do it and if Jen continued to succeed and matriculate throughout the firm through the firm, then many others will follow, and they did. We worked on landmark assignments for clients such as Pfizer and eBay. There was the infamous Facebook IPO where she told the team huddled at the NASDAQ headquarters, do not touch that champagne. The NASDAQ team was giving out champagne the morning the stock was set to open. Uh, the stock didn't open, and um, by the end of the day, there was no celebrating. There were a lot of lessons learned. She's gone from success to success, from becoming a partner to becoming head of the New York office, to becoming head of in-house at Citi in 2014 to lead corporate communications. And by 2022, was global head of comms at Citi, leading a team of 300 that supports Citi's reputation in more than 100 countries. She works with the first woman to lead a major US bank, Jane Frazier, and has helped guide Jane as the first time CEO, a first time woman CEO, as a first time CEO, sorry, as they transform the bank. I know how much Jane relies upon Jen's wisdom, strategic thinking, and advice. Now a few words from Jen. I like to have some fun often in breaking the rule book for corporate speak. There is immense power in the words that you choose. I enjoy using words that are well understood but not common in the business vernacular. I show up and tell people the truth. It takes real art and diligence to help people see that there's often shades of gray. You have to be really curious about the world. One of the biggest opportunities of my career has been to support Jane Fraser as the first female CEO of a major banking institution in the U.S. as a female leader in a heavily male-dominated industry. She has always embraced her femininity and her role as a woman and the strengths that come with it. I find myself often staying late at night to do writing for our CEO or CFO because I need to have shut off the part of me that exists during the day. I really try and break down the hierarchy. 
My view is we work too long and too hard not to do it alongside people that we can laugh with. The best way that I can help pave the way for the next generation is to be in the muck with them. Be honest and be forthright, uh, but do it in a considerate and kind way. It's a privilege to introduce Jen Lowney as a recipient of the Matrix Award. for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. We have a sign on the floor where, we're, where my team sits at city's headquarters here in New York City that says, sit with the warriors, the conversation is different. It always makes me think of Steve. I sat about three feet away from him for about 10 years and had the opportunity to learn from one of the most dedicated, passionate, and talented warriors our profession will ever know. And I have to say, it isn't an accident that he's the only male pre presenter here today. He has been an amazing champion of mine and of women that have come across him through their career and his career. So he's a great, um, uh, he, he deserves the honor as much as the women do for being here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the love, support, and friendship of all that, and all that I have learned from you, Steve, and from the many colleagues and friends that I have here today. And thank you to New York Women in Communications, and congratulations to my fellow honorees tonight. I genu I, like many of the uh, speakers at events like this often share some of the best advice they've gotten in their career. But to keep with the theme, I'm going to share the worst advice I've ever been given, <laughs> which has probably presented, been presented as a rule that I encourage you to break. That advice came from someone who I know well and who cares about me deeply. That advice was, don't take it personally. I could not disagree with it more. <laughs> not only because it's something that I could absolutely never adhere to, and it only takes a fraction of a second for those who know me to know that I simply don't possess the gene that <laughs> allows one to take their feelings out of their circumstances. Sorry, just one moment. Um, When we are counseling our clients, our leaders, we're often there to help them in moments that are immensely personal to them. They care deeply whether or not they show up well at that stage, on that stage, whether they do well in an interview. It is deeply personal to them. And if it's deeply personal to them, and they are trusting me to help them in those moments, it damn well better be personal to me. And it is. I run a team of about 300 people in 60 countries around the world. Nearly every day arrives with a new challenge that we've never before faced, especially now the stakes are high for our bank, and we hold ourselves to ridiculously high standards, often working long days and nights well outside of our comfort zone. My team puts their heart and soul into what they do for City, but I know that they are going that extra mile not only for City, but for each other and for me. The gratitude I feel for their drive and determination is deeply personal. And so is the happiness I feel when we're laughing together in the trenches. It's a very personal squeeze that I feel in my heart when I see the sense of accomplishment and pride in their faces when we've just delivered a big project or when a creative idea they've come up with lands spectacularly. It's personal to me 
that they feel a sense of reward and value for what they contribute, and that they know that I care about them, not only as my colleagues, but as people. I take very personally the responsibility I have for making sure that they get mo the most out of their career experience with me. Their sacrifices, their ambition, their camaraderie, it's deeply personal to them, so it's deeply personal to me. I'm grateful to some of my closest I'm, I'm grateful to some of my closest friends and confidants who are here today to support me, many of whom I have met at work over the years. We've been through hell and back, and they have always, always been there to cheer me on and prop me up. And I hope that they can say the same about me. These are people, my friends, who know the good and bad about me and love me anyway, and who will always champion me, including in rooms that I'm not in. Though it all started at work, it's personal for us. I have an amazing husband who has always been my supporter and advocate. I have three amazing children whose company I enjoy immensely. And I have an incredible network of family and friends from every stage of life. But my job, my career, is a core part of who I am and what I enjoy. It's not something separate from my personal life, and I don't want it to be. Taking work personally makes me better at my job. Taking things personally at work sometimes makes me angry as hell and keeps me up at night. <laughs> but it means that I get to experience the very best of the people that I sometimes spend more time with in a week than my own kids. And taking things at work sometimes means that people take me personally too showing me love and kindness that I feel to my core. Taking things at work sometimes means that they are way, way harder to deal with. But I will take that trade any day of the week, and I hope that you will too. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the evening.